In UFC, I think only one. Korean Zombie. Yeah. Alan now, Belcher almost had it on Paul Horace, dude. Now, now, I have seen it in uh, a couple other smaller promotions. Uh, but UFC, yeah, just that one that I know. Yeah, about. I think I want to maybe say I saw it in like 1FC or something. Yeah. Dude, he's just at will, electric chair in him, man, at will. There he is again. Yep. You were, you were talking about this today, too, transitioning. So he's going to bring his head out first, right? Yeah, see, now... Mm -hmm. Okay, so he didn't get his head up first. Nice sweep, though. Like, if this is a scored jiu-jitsu match, Eddie wins. I know they called it a draw. And I always had a problem with that, dude. And, like, I mean, it's like, yeah, you call it a draw, but Hoyler got his ass beat the oh, yeah. whole time. Like, let's say you gave him guard pass points once. Uh, Eddie got how many sweeps and came on top? I think we're at three currently. Plus advantages for submission attempts. Right. That net crank. He gets the uh, vaporizer here in a moment. But I think Eddie dominated this match. Six minutes, 45 seconds left in the match. How cool is it, John Jock in his corner, man? I know, right? Everybody, it's like everybody, like I never heard shit about Eddie being a John Jock guy until like around this time probably oh really yeah i just like it wasn't something i connected the dots on I, I i knew about it but i maybe i just didn't at the time that i heard about it i didn't have context on how big of a fucking deal john jock was <laughs> and then around probably like probably around like blue and purple i started getting into john jock dude and uh, I remember I had these John Jock videos that I would always watch uh, on YouTube like back in the day he had some good videos I got a, a John Jock book I was looking at the other day too there he is again dude look at his leg mobility that's great oh my gosh how many what is that the fourth electric chair yeah at least Wow, dude. He's just like, okay, come back. I got to get my head out. There. there we go. That's what I was thinking he was going to do a second ago. Now, does he turn and roll? He turns and rolls. He's got a good underhook on this side. Oh, here's that. This is the controversy. The ref doesn't even know what lockdown right. is, apparently. This is funny, man. <laughs> he's, he's like, let me teach this class real quick. How awkward, man. I mean, it is confusing. It is confusing position to be in, but the Eddie just was like basically gets up right here and is like, forget about it. Ho Hoyler won't let him either, honestly. No. Hoyler's in a conspiracy with the ref right now, bro. Put it up on the screen. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> it 
Isn't it? Yeah, dude. We need instant replay <laughs> in all combat sports. Oh, I agree. I think this is the tenth uh, jujitsu episode I've done on the podcast. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? Yeah. Just doing stuff like this. I had a couple guys on recently. I did. Uh, it, it comes out tomorrow morning at nine a.m. But I filmed this little docu series for the Jim YouTube. It's about twenty five minutes. It's got a couple Kamora trap, four Kamora trap uh, techniques in it, but like clips in the podcast and videos of me rolling to the sky and stuff. Jason Ryan. It'll be on the Jim YouTube tomorrow. Man, Eddie has got such good commentary on this. Yeah, he needs to do that as Hoyler pushes him away. Yeah. Yep. See, this is kind of like a leg drag position, but with lockdown. You and I have talked about this yeah. before. I have a calf crusher I do from here. Oh, yeah. What does he call this when he fakes like that? Jedi mind trick? No. <laughs> yeah. I forget what he calls where he he will fake choking or fake being tired to get him to try harder. And yeah. Then, Oh, let's watch Hoyler's face here. We got three and a half minutes left. So Hoyler's going to be in this, what, the rest of the match. I wonder how Hoyler's body was feeling. after. Because Hoyler's over 50 in this match, is he not? I think Eddie was 47 and Hoyler was 53 or something like that. I think it was 43. 43 and 47, maybe. 47, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. Maybe I looked it up the other day, and that's how old they are now, 47, 53. Yeah. yeah. something like that. I think they're five years apart. Dude, look at his knee, bro. The, the leg ain't supposed to make those angles. No. Like, you see, like, right below his knee, how it, like, turns and makes a U a little bit. It's not as bad now, but, like, it's because his calf's all smushed. It makes it look different. That's that freaking Buddha way, man. Like, I came here to die. Yeah. Like, I, I never really uh, thought about jujitsu that way. You no. know what I'm saying? Like, with like the, oh, yes, just break my shit. I don't need to walk. I don't need to teach my students next week. Look oh, at that. dude, that's so sick, man. See, there's some sort of controversy here about the only reason Hoyler is eluding is because he's holding Eddie's gi pants with a hook grip, right? Which was a lot of early debates and the rules. And one of the reasons this match didn't happen until it did was debating rules. Yeah. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Was well, because Eddie always wanted to, to make it a no-gi match, but wear gi pants, I guess. Well, see, Eddie. So Eddie's sick. always wore gi pants like that, and I'm not sure with this match if he wanted to wear gi pants or he wanted to wear, you know, just a rash guard and shorts. Mm -hmm. I know that it ended up being he had to wear gi pants, and because that's how the first match was, or whatever. yeah. yeah. Minute 20 left. Hoyler's still not tapping. Yeah, man. Imagine all that pride and ego. Hoyler not one to tap oh, twice yeah. to Eddie. That's, just, uh, that's the toxic side of jiu-jitsu, man. Oh, yeah. Honestly, it's because, like, dude, Eddie's better than Hoyler. We've seen that. There's no way to argue it the other way. And it's like, ah, dude, I just can't. I can't see risking a limb or, or let's just say he's not able to walk at 70 Oh, or yeah. something like that. You know, like because of the constant, I mean, doing this at 50 or 47 yeah. or however old he was. See how he's holding those hook grip on the pants right there? So he's saying he wanted to wear gi pants and asked to change. Yeah. <laughs> to, towards to the short, match, yeah. and they said that he couldn't. Dude, 
Ten seconds left. Lateral cartilage tear. I would I'm, say a lateral cartilage and a meniscal tear. At least. I mean, it, at that angle, it could have tore, you know, uh, ACL, MCL, yeah. all that. Let's see here. Uh, please don't watch this on YouTube. Sorry, Halleck. We don't like you. You're not a good business person. What what did Halleck do to try and raise money? Didn't he fight like MMA or some shit and then I, lost? Yeah, I think so. I, I do not like that guy. You know, uh, you're talking the toxic uh, way of thinking. I remember when I started with 10th Planet, I still got people to this day that won't talk to me because I left the traditional jiu-jitsu side. Dude, that sounds like some Christianity or something. Right. Like, bro, um, I just can't talk to you anymore because whatever. Man, I really like Joe's studio. I want my studio to be like Joe's. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it is my hope that I can, like, with it being inside the gym, that I can make it... Uh, like a real chill place to be yeah one thing core doesn't really like this idea but tell me what you think about it dude i want to do this and i want to i want to get the actual quarter machines that way i think it'll curb some of the the bs i want to find the following an og like joystick button like street fighter 2 mortal Kombat, and um teenage mutant ninja turtles arcade games like traditional like you would see it like mazios or some shit back in the day and um put those in the new gym dude that'd be badass i know and like just like we do with water it's like yeah they're a quarter i think it's a quarter to play and like that this is like a, a means of keeping kids entertained but if I, 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 we could get the free ones with the cabinets or like chintzy on them or, yeah. or we could get that where you don't have to put the quarter in all right let's see what eddie's saying here to I like how Eddie goes into the background of where I so said we're watching the Eddie uh, explains rubber guard to Hickson now and it's a minute 40 in but he's explaining how he developed it for MMA yeah. do you think any of Eddie's back problems have been from him being folded up on his back in rubber guard <laughs> Because he had a vertebrae replaced, yeah. man, a couple maybe. Um, but I think it was more in his neck. I would, I don't know, man. I mean, I know when I play rubber guard a lot, the next day I'm pretty sore. You got Joe Rogan's space suit in the back, dude, his NASA space suit <laughs> yeah. hanging up there. Eddie's got crazy dexterity, though. Double bag. That's a double bag? Uh, that's that's crackhead control. Okay. Um, when he had mission control and then had grabbed his foot up on, like, up in the mid, upper back, that's double bagging. Okay. And okay. then it, it kind of builds, you know, double bag, invisible collar, so on and so forth. I like that light he has above his uh, pool table there. That's dope. Yeah, it is pretty cool, isn't it? I never really noticed it. It's like a chandelier. I like how they're both wearing Elio Gracie <laughs> shirts. <laughs> This zombie control is great, man. Yeah. I get into that natural. I don't have to use the zombie transition a lot. A lot of times I just have. But at the same time, when people are trying to put me in rubber guard, I keep my arms on their chest so they would have to do that to yeah. me. It's like I see it. But most of the time when I'm getting into rubber guard, I already have the arm like where I need it to be. 
what I notice with that is a lot of people will put their hands on the mat uh-huh, to try yeah. to push off of you. So they're already setting up that that arm trap for the zombie, you know, to hug the knee. Who are some MMA guys that use rubber guard? You got Tony. Tony obviously uses yep. it. Um, um, I've see. seen several people use it over the years. Belcher. Belcher. Um the Korean zombie, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, oh, uh, George Sotteropoulos back in the day. You remember him? Yeah. Australian dude. Submitted Joe Lozon with North South Camorra. Yep. He trained with Eddie a lot. You know, used to, though, you didn't see it as much. Now, you see a lot of fighters come through uh, a 10th Planet gym. Uh, a lot of them hit headquarters a lot. And, I mean, you won't see it. They won't pull rubber guard, you know, in a match. But if you if you watch, there's aspects of it. You yeah. Know. I, I, there's a, even at Brown Belt and then once at Purple Belt, I had two different matches. And I didn't really know anything about rubber guard. I was just using more of a high guard posture control. But I, would use, I had flexibility and I would use – I'd crawl my legs up on the back of their spine like that and, like, pull them down – use it to break break them down and they'd always be like oh you're using the crackhead man get it. watch out and i'd be like oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. but it's just kind of like when eddie came out wrestling against hoiler it's like he ain't wrestling yeah the motherfuckers trying to get half guard <laughs> dude but it's like a kind of a fake i didn't really have a system or know what i was doing until like we started hanging out really i mean i'd seen some things but i just never really went down the rabbit hole on it i, yeah. I went down the rabbit hole on the truck and and on 10th Planet's half card. Who, who called John Jack? Who's he saying? I don't I, I don't remember. Dude, here's the thing. Like what Eddie just described is a is is a key part of the grading in many martial arts. Like, like Ed, okay, Eddie, you got your bite belt. Uh, now, part of your job as a bite belt is to give back to the art, right? To contribute to the art, and he's done that. Like, you can't argue anything else. He's done that. And that, I think, is like the responsibility of all uh, teachers of the art, but particularly all bite belts. It's like, if you want to keep getting degrees of bite belt and you want to keep getting better, uh, if you want to keep progressing in the ranks, coral belt, red belt, whatever, like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing for the art? What are you doing for your students? What are your students doing? Here's where he talks about how they named the twister the twister. John Jock came up with it. Who cares if he... Why do people give him so much shit about naming his techniques? Because uh, the old way of thinking, the closed, you know, jujitsu-minded community, I guess you'd say, um, when he started renaming stuff, they were... It was like he was trying to reinvent, you know... I and guess it's only cool when fucking Keenan does it. I guess, you know. I don't like how Keenan does it. Keenan's a much more controversial figure to me than Eddie is. And, you know, a, a lot of the names, you know, and a lot of the crazy names, like Eddie says, you know, it's it sticks in your head. You know, I, I'm I'm all about having names, man. I try and and name all my techniques, or like the videos. Like if I get to naming them, I will. Sometimes the videos aren't like I, like today. I did a video. I was uploading as like uh, three attacks from north south, but then I go into the description. I'm like, I outline them what, whatever the technique name is. See, this guard offers a, a fair amount of connection as well. Right? Right. What I call, and what Hickson calls connection of like, I just uh, like, uh, if you're doing connection in a guard, I describe it as like feeling like you have a uh, uh, an anchor around your neck. Like you're just like, 
like you can't posture. Yeah. Like if you postured, you would have a human being hanging off your neck. Right. And is that go go clinch? Go go clinch. That, oh, I haven't seen Sarah. You ever did the wicked triangle? Huh? Like where you, you triangle and then you put that foot in like a butterfly and it spinal locks them. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll pull it up here in just a second. And you know, I've noticed, uh, like Coach and Seth over the years with the names it's so much easier to coach yeah you know instead of me yelling you know oh it is that is the name that is what i wondered many times if that isn't where they came from it's like like or, or like why i like 10th planet shit is being different it's because it's like i hate coaching people on uh mike sometimes I'll coach him and like the, uh, the opponent knows like you tell right. him, but like the, the 10th planet's like not everybody knows those terms. Right. Like we ran into that here, um, at that first AGF that we competed yeah, yeah. here with Seth. And I remember, uh, when we were talking several times, I'm like, what do you call this? Like, like we were yeah. like, cause I was, cause that's important. It's important that, that you have, um, Cause I'm never one like I like I would never be one to like in that situation be like, oh I'm gonna get out here and coach you. like, cause I'm the boss or whatever. Cause right. like with that instance, it's like y'all just start training, uh, and it's like he has rapport, knows what you're gonna like. I don't know what terms he uses really <laughs> like in and until like we have more crossover terms like we do now because that's been a couple years. Uh, you gotta you got to make normalcy for the, for the people right. like what they normally see and get. One of my first experiences with a 10th planet gym, we were in El Paso and, uh, we were training at a different school. Well, Seth, you know, he's always wrestled. So he's always been a big no gi, uh, guy. Well, we didn't train a lot of no gi at the school. So he was competing in this tournament. No gi, and here I am trying to coach, not training no gi. And um, one of the 10th planet, I think he was a purple belt at the time, uh, came over and was like, hey, man, I can help you out if you want. He's like, because he saw me sitting there struggling because I knew my gi grips, you know, stuff like that. So here I am trying to coach my son in a no gi tournament using gi terms. Yeah. So this guy that I'd never met uh, from 10th Planet El Paso at the time came over and helped me coach him. And I think he ended up winning that tournament or placing second to uh, one of their, one of their uh, kids out of their, out of their program. So I thought it was super cool when this video came out. Super cool that just like, I mean, like, look, like Hickson's, Hickson's giving him time of day. Like, I know that since this has come out, Hickson has um, come out and talked about how he doesn't think. Hickson does this real similar guard called Valet Tudo guard. I've done some videos about it on the internet, um, on YouTube. But it's different. He, it's kind of like the straight jacket without hook in their arm. How, okay. how Hickson does it. Very heavy. Breaks you face first down on the mat. More out to the side. Kind of like a carny. Um, actually, I think you got that on me today. Yeah, po- possibly. Possibly. And it's very heavy. Joe's, Joe's talking. I like how they blacked out. I get that's the front studio entrance. They blacked it out with those blinds and shit. Dexterity is such a unique thing about jujitsu. Like how you develop like the the hand like dexterity in your right. legs, in your feet and legs. Yeah.
Yeah, I know what technique he's talking about with Henzo. I've seen Henzo. That's how Henzo shows bigger guys and smaller leg guys. Guys with like guys trying to triangle big shouldered dudes Mm -hmm. or short leg guys trying to triangle just normal people. So here I'm gonna I'm gonna play that uh, wicked triangle for you, and then we'll wrap it up. And you know, like uh, I was real intimidated when I first started doing the Tenth Planet system. Because, I mean, I've had multiple knee surgeries. Yeah. You know, uh, I was like, I'm not that flexible. Well, it's all about cutting angles and, and stuff like that. I mean, I show... It really is. Like, being on your side and shit is so bad. Like, I noticed such a big deal and like, strain difference. Like, watch. See how he's putting his... Dude, I remember when this was, like, the Bible of YouTube. Oh, I do, too. Well, see, Ari there is a black belt in, in the gi under, and pl- fuck, dude, red gi. Like, I love my red gi. I, got, I can't wait till I get to one of the black lapels. Um, but he's uh, under that Keith Owen guy. Okay. And Keith, if you, I would say, man, Keith has some side mount escapes and some other shit on here that is great on yeah. Submissions 101 channel. They did real good about collaborating with some folks. But Ari's, uh, see, uh, Keith is a Pedro Sauer black belt. See, it turns into a spinal lock. It's super interesting. It has shoulder walks, and it makes your spine bow down in the middle. That's that same sort of posture, that yeah. the anchor around the neck, posture control. Here, we'll get the side view. It'll be... See, that's the opposite side. So it's almost like uh, you would normally turn your head the other direction to make it tighter. (laughs) You've never seen that? No. Interesting, yeah. The wicked triangle. I saw that as like a blue belt. I wouldn't have to try that. Demented my mind. Yeah. (laughs) It's super cool, man. And I want to say that it's something from Eddie's Eddie's system. If I'm not mistaken, it's a a 10th planet uh, type of a move. But I could be wrong. But uh, it's very interesting. It's like, uh, I really like that video, the Capoeira Pass, where Ari and Eddie are breaking shit down and stuff. We talked about that recently. And that's too, like... You get to research it. I, I think about it like, uh, you know, have you, you know what umami means? Hmm. I th- if I'm not mistaken, it means all the flavors at once. Sweet, bitter, sour, uh, spicy. Yeah. Um, but the, it's almost like uh, when you get to looking at jujitsu, like I was telling somebody this, like I use the heads and tails of the same coin analogy, but like you, you go walk at, uh, Hicks in passing, he's like, hey, uh, use your distribution of weight, connection. Um, you don't, you should be able to pass the guard without the hands. Brandon was saying that. Right. John Donaher says the opposite. Says you, you got to use your hands as wedges, like, like Hoyler was doing. Yeah. Right? So it's like that, well, that's heads and tails, but also you get, you get deeper with that. It's like, oh, I'm going to get into like researching how to pass this or how to do that. You get into these different flavors like 10th Planet, DDS. Uh, you get like the more traditional like kicks in like, yeah, do this and you're really fucking heavy and they can't do shit. Like just that sort of archaic as fuck yeah. jujitsu. But it's just like you get to, and then you get like the sport perspective. Right, so like it's like Hickson's more like that fundamentalist self defense. The sport perspective is more like these are the rules by the book. Don't sit down and give them a sweep. <laughs> and and then you get the like the real conceptual approach of oh, I mean all of it is real conceptual approach, but it's almost like this different flavors, man. And I really want that umami f- type approach. Yeah. It's like this is all the flavors. I mean, that's the only way you can be well rounded. I think, you know. Agreed, man. Agreed. Well, how was your first podcast? Pretty cool. It's pretty basic. Yeah. I think not doing it live, which I don't even think Joe Rogan does lives anymore, but not doing it live, I think, is good for piss. Some people get real weird about talking into the mic, even though, like, it's just me and you in here. No one hears you talking right now. It's like, people are going to hear me talk in the future. (laughs) Holy shit. It's interesting. But... 
Yeah, man, I've actually wanted to have you on for some time now, so we got to knock it out, do a little yeah. jiu-jitsu episode. We'll have to, um, if you if you spot, I always tell people I have on the podcast, uh, like part of doing this is just like getting repetitious people to come on, or like a podcast to do, creating content and su- subjects, but if you want to do any of the EBIs on the Fight Pass, oh, that'd be or awesome. any of the ADCCs, I love like the idea of podcasting like a... Uh, things like that like going back to like adcc 96 and watching it yeah you know what i'm saying just like i i think that's super cool so if you want to do that or combat jiu-jitsu or anything kind of let me know if you have any ideas on that because uh i love uh having repeat guests and also just for this jiu-jitsu show because i share it on the gym page yeah so this will be the jiu-jitsu unraveled number 10 nice all right dude well signing off man we'll see you guys next time All right, man. Pardon my Legos here. <laughs> Harry Potter. Uh, so uh, we're going to do a Jiu-Jitsu Unraveled here. Brent, uh, you can hear me all right. Yes. Do you, yeah. uh, have you talked in the microphone very much? No, no. Not just a lot. Put, just put this about a, a, um, a fist away or, or a little less or more or whatever. And then you can just like turn it however you want. You can move, okay. it, move it forward and backward. It's basically so you can hear me and I can hear you. Well, let's uh let's watch a little Eddie Bravo. First thing that came up is tinfoil hat, and the <laughs> second thing that came here here are the Eddie Bravo search results on YouTube: tinfoil hat, Joey Diaz, DMT, rubber guard, Bravo, just just his name Eddie Bravo, and then here I was in one, two, three, four, five, six down. We got what we're here to do: Eddie Bravo versus Hoyler Gracie, and we want to watch. Uh, Let's watch, um, let's see. Let's watch the first match. There's a couple of different, uh, do you want to watch the match with commentary from Eddie? Uh, we can. I mean. Well, see, so we can hear whatever comes through on TV, but the audience can't. So oh, okay. like what, what, if Eddie's talking, that doesn't get recorded. Just what we say gets recorded. Um, so let's see. We got. Because I think he was a brown belt. Yeah, 2003, uh, man. Yeah. That's um, one year after that, if I'm not mistaken, 2004 is when Marcelo did that no-hook rear naked choke to Shaolin. You remember that? Marcelo Garcia caught. Mm-mm. Yeah, that's an epic match. Um, let's see. So we got um, – uh, let's see. Let's go by view count. Uh, commentary by Eddie has 460,000 views. And then you've got um, the just entire match with no commentary, but that's on the Submissions 101 channel. That's 620. Let's watch that one. Studio TV. I gotta get, I gotta, uh, I've been thinking about swapping our little lead-in music that we do. <laughs> You did get about stuff in my uh, Kimura trap today. I kept trying to roll it, but you, you were passing to my bad side. Okay, uh, Hoyler and Eddie. How many times do you think you've seen this? Oh, man. Look how young he looks, dude. Dozens. Yeah, you ever get into the guy that Ari is under for jiu-jitsu, for the submission one-on-one guy? Keith Owens, his name. Uh, I've seen some of his stuff, not a lot. He's been on the channel. He's been on submissions one on one. But uh, that guy, I've actually talked to him on the phone. I need to send him a message because I actually just uh, he's who we got our injury report for him from. Oh really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he had one and he was talking about doing it and, and then having stats. And I just messaged him. Was like, dude, I'm interested in doing that. Yeah, I mean, I I like it. I like the whole format of it. It's so crazy that Hoyler did. Hoyler did the same shit. In the second match, that same sort of knee slide pass with, I don't knee slide pass with that pressure like that. Do you? No. Um, I do more of an over under. I don't go under the head with the left. See how he's, man, I like how Eddie has a. Uh, if I, if I, if I pressure like that, I try to flatten them out. Oh, same, same. I put my head on this side. Right. Almost like a tripod but, pass. But, but. 
Hoyler does that. I don't know, man. Hoyler's four-time world champion in, in gi jiu-jitsu matches. I don't know if he's ever won any no-gi worlds or anything like that. Even yeah. if he did, it would be the, the IBJJF rules, which are no heel hooks and <laughs> right. all sorts of other weird shit. Eddie's not really doing a lot of lockdown, but what does he call that when he pinches his knees like that? That's something I've seen. Helson's got a real popular video on controlling somebody. When um, they have like a quarter position like that. Oh, like the quarter guard? Yeah, like uh, he has, he's holding that on bottom, but there's some special details that go into that. I mean, it's uh, it's not just pinch your knees together. Yeah. But I do like how he's over the head. He doesn't have the underhook, but he's under the leg and has the the sort of pretzel grip there. And this is where he jailbreaks it. When did you? When would you say Eddie started getting? Was I mean? I guess it's after this match, like two thousand four and on, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. When he started getting big. I mean, he was already big when I started training. I feel like I feel like what he was doing with no geeks. I started training in December of two thousand six. Oh wow! So I feel like he was because I remember Mike, my one of my coaches, showing me a bunch of stuff from with from the lockdown in like oh seven and oh eight, and that was all Eddie Bravo stuff. Let's see. I'm trying to think. I would say I was seeing lockdown stuff probably 05, 06 maybe uh, before I started before I started with a 10 planet gym. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this being 03, I could see, like, and that's kind of the narrative I've always heard is that Eddie did bro- did blow up after this match. Um, I want to say that Eddie also beat another guy here, uh, Gustavo Dantes, in this tournament. Uh, yeah, I think it was. That guy's pretty uh, renowned as a coach these days. It's back to this quarter pass again. That's kind of the highlight of their second match, which we'll watch in a moment. Do you set up very many uh, triangle, straight arm lock, or omoplata sort of offense, offensive moves from half guard, like pulling the center leg out? Uh, one of my big go-tos from half guard is, uh, like you've seen, my, my Dars mm-hmm. or my Anaconda, and then uh, my arm triangles. Uh, I don't hit a lot of arm arm bars. Uh, every once in a while, I get like a Kimura. Yeah. I do a Kimura from half guard on bottom, too. Um, here was Eddie's bracket. Um, Eddie beat Gustavo Dantas. Then he beat Hoyler. And then he fought Leonardo um, Vieira and lost in the, in the – uh, finals but uh vier i mean he lost the guy that won the whole thing yeah vier beat barrett yoshida that's that's kind of funny hoyler ended up taking bronze Yeah, there you go. It pulled it through. Once he gets that foot out. You ever use the wicked triangle? No, okay, this is not where he got the finish. He pulls it through again in a second, does he not? Right. So if I'm right here's where he jail breaks. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And nice. gets back to um I forgot he did it from underside. I thought he did it from half. That's why I was kind of Well I guess yeah, yeah, he's kinda of getting half, but there he's kinda of coming up to a rubber guard. Was he doing rubber guard in this time? Uh yeah. I mean it just wasn't as big a big a thing as it is now, of course. Yeah, there he is trying to go for mission control. Yep. 
Apparently, he was super uh, worn out after this match. Zombied. Did he a zombie? Wasn't yep. that? Yeah. Man, Eddie is such a creative dude. Oh, yeah. You know, that's what I've always liked about him is like, because I got that same disease in a way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, like, like what we're doing right now, like, I have to do this. Yeah. I think you have to have to be really creative. I mean, you've talked about it multiple times. You can't get stuck in that same, you know, simple mindset. Oh, there well, it goes crackhead control. Nice. So what's the difference between crackhead control and the pyramid? Do you know? Uh, I'd have to... These are some. These are just basic questions I was coming up with because I was like, okay, I think crackhead control and the uh, the pyramid might just have like one difference on like what that um, leg does, like where it's at, oh, that the shoulders in or out. There he goes, chill dog. I think people too uh, underemphasize how much he's biting down with that right that leg nearest us. Oh yeah. Because that's one thing I stopped for the longest time because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to with the other leg, putting a foot on the mat to maneuver. Yeah. Right. You know, Hoyler always doing that knee slide pass, man. This is uh, where they they call it cocoon. Oh, yeah. you, You mentioned that earlier. Yeah, there it is. Yep. And he sat down on it in defense. You ever can opener anybody to get? <laughs> yeah. I was just watching a submissions 101 video yesterday uh, about can opener and the guard. He's tapping. Damn. You know, for a long time, well, just like uh, heel hooks, neck cranks, you know, people consider that can opener a neck crank. So it, do, you, do you think it is? I don't. What do you would you just call it strangulation? Yeah, I mean, it, it's more. I'm just compressing down on you. I think it is a it is weird. I, it's not it's not super crankish, but I, I should have showed you this. Uh, okay, so we're starting. Um, let's see. Tell the audience what video this is. Uh, Metamorphs three Hoyler Gracie versus Eddie Bravo three point six million views uploaded three years ago. Um. Oh. Okay. Do we want to watch the video with the commentary from Jeff Glover and shit, or do we want to watch the Eddie Bravo breakdown of the Hoyler Gracie rematch at Metamorphs Three on Joe Rogan's podcast? Oh, let's watch the Eddie Bravo breakdown. I don't think I've. Oh, it's good. I remember what sucked is I was driving to Bentonville um, to train or, or stay up there or something, uh, and. I heard, I listened to them breaking it down and I just seen the match. So I could like follow along because I couldn't watch it. I remember like I was about to drive through the tunnel going to <laughs> yeah. North, South, Northwest Arkansas. All right. So we're starting that now on Joe Rogan's podcast, 32 minutes long. I remember watching this video or watching this match. Uh, I was already training at 10th Planet and I was, I watched it with people uh, that didn't train uh, 10th Planet. So. There was quite a. It was like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was you said that was the first one or this one? This one. See, yeah, yeah. Me too. That well, and too, like you, you're one of the only guys I know that have trained extensively with Tenth Planet. Some guys I know out of Oklahoma have a little bit, um, but uh, it is such a unique system. Not just the nogi part. Like you, you get into just their core positions, uh, like rubber guard. The truck, spider web, half guard. Um, it's all it's it's unique. It's it, yes, there's other things like that in this culture jujitsu, but not like that. Yeah, it, this is different. This is more creative. This is it's it's unique. Okay, so they're talking about the um, they're talking about the first match now. Talking about jailbreaking. But Tenth Planet stuff, especially how they've evolved a little bit, like everybody, every association does, with doing the warm up drills, with doing um, 
more uh, like with the combat jujitsu and the EBIs yeah. and like just the whole overall evolution of Eddie Bravo's brand. And, you know, I remember the first EBIs. I was I was already training with 10th Planet. And hearing people talk, they were like, oh, yeah, it's just a fad, you know. I do so, remember that. It's something Eddie's trying to throw out there. It was demonized. What was funny is it was demonized even when I was not training in the gi. I knew that it was demonized. Because yeah. the first 18 months or so that I trained, like, whether they said that what we were doing was influenced by Eddie Bravo or not, it clearly was. Oh, yeah. Because he was the guy that, as a matter of fact, it's like almost like looking back on it, I'm like, oh, we were, the gym I was at was a part of that fad of like the first wave of Eddie Bravo. Like, of like, yeah, gi is not cool, no gi. Like, that was kind of what I came into. And then my coach got a blue belt and he's like, well, we're doing a gi program now. And like, I tell everybody this, I'm like, so you mean extra rolling like a night of extra rolling i got to do these moves before you let me roll but you're telling me if i come in there's going to be extra rolling on monday nights at six (laughs) o'clock like that's all i saw i didn't even know what the pajamas were dude you know when i first started you know i started with uh army combatives and it was a big you know the gracie sold the Brazilian jiu-jitsu thing to the military. Yeah, oh, for like $18,000 uh, a swath. Which, don't get me wrong, it's a great uh, self-defense. Yeah. But what mainly got me going to 10th Planet is how many times walking around a day did you see somebody in a gi or a jacket? You yeah, know? yeah. Uh, you know, I always tell people, I like one time my cousin was wearing a hoodie just like you and I choked him out. Right. Because he came to class and it was gi class and he didn't have a gi. I was like, don't worry about it. Just wear what you got on. Uh, but uh, I mean, man, you start trying to do that shit with the t-shirt. Like we were talking about that in Quiznos when I was like off balance and you with gi grips and shit. Is you can do some of that stuff. Like the main thing I did it for is for off balancing and that's like the judo concept of like if you can't but also like back to this john jock and him only having two fingers yeah and how he has developed a game around not being but he still grips the gi dude he'll be like passing his gi to to his two fingers or using his two fingers to pass his gi to his whole hand and but he the people commentate on this all the time he develops such a unique approach to underhooks and overhooks right. and frames and super what I call super grip like the double wrist lock all of that is so unique with him and like you know you had Brandon on your podcast and he's trained I, I'm wanting to say he's trained with John Jock oh I bet he has he's trained with Hickson several times and I didn't get the podcast with Brandon I had I had my studio torn down when he was in that's right know. I forgot I about by, that but we, we gotta have him back I feel bad because I was talking to him about coming in like September and shit and this like this move just has us in limbo on a lot of right. things like I'm not wanting to schedule a whole lot like we've just been kind of like yeah because I mean we gotta get everything set back up well that and too like man honestly we're at a weird tipping point like adults are fine we could still take adult members but like dude like we can take 8 to 12 year old kids but we cannot take uh, for, for jiu jitsu, 8 to 12 year old kids for jiu jitsu but we can't take the MMA program 8 to 12 like we can if we like every month we'll have one or two that'll you know right. cancel membership or whatever but dude Tuesday Thursday was our slow day now it's like our busy day it's just well I can't remember what day it was that I came in just to talk to you that one day and the red mat was complete like there was no space on that red mat this is gonna be great man like I tell Cora this and I hope that I'm correct it's like I think this new gym will be a check mate move for us in terms of like I don't want to offer any bigger of a product than what we're about to yeah. be doing you know what I'm saying even into I, I love that I'm gonna be able to dovetail like what we're doing like imagine today like we could have just been like dude you want to walk over to Lourdes and eat across <laughs> the road and just come back and podcast <laughs> right. or, or podcast I mean the studio would be literally right next door so that's gonna be that's gonna be huge and I think that we will have um, 
plenty of room out back and shit to to use the sled to flip the tires yep. it's, that's a big lot dude like uh three and a half acres oh really something like that yeah, I, I, I need to double check all, but all around, it goes right? all the way to the hotel that's behind it oh wow and then across it's wide too there's like a berm in the back that divides it from that gravel parking lot but that gravel parking lot for events and shit if we have overflow yeah because uh, I'm just going to talk to that church and be like, hey, since you're breaking city codes by uh, having a gravel parking lot, I won't complain, and then they'll make you do it next time you re- if you just let me park here when I want. <laughs> right. We shouldn't have that. It's got 48 spaces, and I'm going to gravel next to both sides of the building for, like, instructor parking and stuff. And, two with what we're in, the yoga room. Have you been in there with me yet? No. Uh, okay, I couldn't remember if one day me, you, and Michelle, and... I, um, I've been in there while it was still, you back know, to back basics. to basics. Yeah, yeah. What, ironically, Nick Oots um, did a lot of the original graphics and painting shit in there. Oh, He's really? our graphic designer now. Did you get one of the new t-shirts? Uh the bird shirt it's got the yeah, bird on yeah, yeah those are yeah. dope dude <laughs> nick i mean nick designed that i was like you got any more of them animal designs dude <laughs> any more force that animal design so they're still uh let's see eddie and joe are still commenting on uh, commentating on metamorris they haven't started breaking down the match it's seven minutes and 55 seconds into the podcast of a 32 minute video yeah, good. The autoplay is on, and the next thing that pops up is uh, Eddie Bravo explains rubber guard to Hickson. That'll nice. be good, and we'll cap it off with that. Eddie was training crazy for this. Yeah, he swam a lot yeah. for this. He, he was talking about, you know, I do think that simulated hyperventilation is a part of your training. That's why I kind of like the gas mask idea. I, I th- anything that makes you. Yeah, I agree. Um, for a long time when I was still in the army, I trained with a uh, elevation mask on. Yeah. And I noticed it helped. It, it helped my jujitsu more than it helped anything else. Well, I think Hickson's deep belly breathing, like the Kundalini. I yep. think that's like, uh, is, is how he's described, like uh, getting his diaphragm, like how he works it. It's like he's in a state of hyperventilation, like he's simulating it. <clears throat> yeah. Joe does provide great commentary oh, on know. Eddie, man. If like, it's funny how he, uh, Eddie's is UK and what is it, Jiu-Jitsu Unleashed? Yeah, well, you know, uh, Joe and Eddie are, or Joe was around when Eddie started the Tenth Planet system. Uh, I forget which video it is. Joe talks about that's how they came up. They were just sitting around talking, and that's how they came up with the name. Isn't it funny that okay? I like how Eddie's like, I'm a wrestler, I'm a wrestler, I'm a wrestler, I'm a wrestler, but I'm gonna pull half guard. Like, I mean, look, he comes out and he is like wrestling, isn't it? Boom, it's so good at pulling half guard, dude. I'm not yeah. good at pulling half guard. I think no. I mentioned it earlier, but I'm not good at it. I, I'm not either. Um, once we're down, I can get, I'm pretty good at getting half guard, you know. Well, like you saw this morning when we were rolling, I can get it from a lot of different places, but I can't just pull it, yeah. I've been getting better at, like, if I'm on my off side, like, let's say I have my legs on the right side, I can switch and get my legs on the left side. That's what I like. I did that maybe when we were rolling. Yeah. I did that in rubber guard because I had rubber guard on the off side, and then I was like, oh, fuck, I'm going to put it on the good side. Still didn't work. Here they're going into the gee pants controversy. See, same story on... Yeah, that slot. Like, yeah. Pass. I wonder if Hoyler like looked back in the previous match and was like, "I was kidding him with this." Yeah, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because he did have him flat, right? But like Joe said, it's like Eddie flat is not. No, uh, because like when Eddie was flat, he had that under the leg and over the shoulder, and like, well, I mean, shit, isn't the whip up technically when you're flat? Yeah, a lot of times, yeah. yeah.
eighteen twenty four into the match. Remaining rather. You know, was there any bad blood between Hoyler and Eddie after this? I know Hoist tried some to start some weird shit. You know, shit. I honestly don't think so. I, um, like they're talking here, you know, he, they're just talking back and forth. Uh, and I don't think Eddie's one of the ki- the kind of person that would keep a beef going. Yeah, I know, man. And if it, I feel like any of the stuff that Eddie's put, it's been like misconceptions. Yeah. Like like, like that Lavarnia guy coming in and choking him out and shit. <laughs> like everybody thinking that was real. <laughs> I remember thinking that was real. Or not knowing what to think. I, I love watching the the videos where, with that guy in it. Oh, dude, there's one of like him, him and Joe Rogan in like the locker room. Yep. And he's like, don't you talk shit about James Brown? Do I come to your country and shit on Helio Gracie? <laughs> like he said that. And I was just like, like, like Joe gets all hot because he's, he talks and he's like, oh, you smoking your heifer? <laughs> Reefer. Yeah. Your heifer. Okay. So Eddie's going for, what do you, what do you say when like, see how Eddie's going underneath the leg? I call that diving under, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, that's. I wonder how much Eddie still trains with John Chuck. Oh, I'm sure he still still trains quite a bit with him. I mean, I don't know how much time he has, you know. Yeah. Because he I still know. teaches uh, a lot at headquarters. Dude, I was thinking about this day, and it's like I, uh, I teach less now than ever, actually, just because I'm, like, teaching college six hours yeah. a day. But – um but I really like the amount that I teach, but it kind of, I feel like a lot of people um, try and like get out of teaching all together. And I feel like I've had people try and like uh, influence me to take that path even. And I'm like, mm. Mm. I, I've seen and I've heard of it. Uh, I've never trained at a gym where, you know, the black belt or whatever had a had a real hands off yeah uh, i've always been lucky that even like just like on like almost every night like you teach one night a week no gi but like i'm pretty much there every yeah. night i might go do something on the computer or or what have you but i i can't i, I don't want to disconnect from a business like that even yeah. if i was broken i i like I wouldn't want to be like just sitting in my office coming out and being like, all right, you guys worship me. I'm out here <laughs> right. I'm show a move. But I like having a hands on approach. You know, um, he is doing uh, Hoyler does have a lot of shoulder pressure there. I just can't see like, look, Hoyler's body is going left, but all of his pressure is going down into the right. Like I don't, but it's all on the upper body. I, I just don't I don't see why he's trying to pass that way. Yeah. I just don't do that. Yeah, he's just saying that's their first match. course yeah dude every time you roll you should do things you've never really done before i think yeah I, yeah did you do i mean there's a time or two today i did some shit i hadn't really done before i showed Cora something today and then she from half mount and then she did it to me in side mount yeah right it was like a lapel <laughs> choke but um and she had never seen it before today that's how it worked it, it, not only should she do what i was showing her she mutated it yeah and i i think that's a big thing you know keep evolving Because, I mean, how many times have we talked to guys about, okay, this guy does this every time, you know, so we're going to th- game plan it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
Dude, I've tapped a lot down before. Have you? I, I've tapped people. I, I've tapped people, yeah. Have you tapped me with it? Uh, no, I don't think there's I've tapped uh, you with one it. of our purple belts. I doubt you've met him too much. He hadn't trained very much the last three years or so. His name's Vince. There he's in that electric chair. But he's ta- he was just here the other day. He came over and hung out for a little while. And he uh, he's tapped me with a lockdown a couple yeah. of times. He just has a good lockdown. Yeah. Now, when we were in Germany, uh, we'd do tournaments over there. And a lot of Seth's matches got stopped because he would tap kids with lock- with lockdown. I've heard uh, that was always like a horror story. Like, be careful out there because you put the lockdown on, (laughs) they might tap the calf pressure and then you disqualified. Yeah, like it was real. Like, that people would be like, be careful. Got the sweep, still has a lockdown, just holding half mount. See, this is different because Hoyler's legs are facing the other way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hoyler's flat, but his legs are not... F- but he's cradling him. Man, I like cradle passes. There's a video. Uh, check this out if you if you get a moment on our YouTube for Half Mount called the P-Lock. Yeah. It's basically a cradle pass. It's a, uh, one of my coaches taught it to me years ago, and it's, I've had some success with it, the P-Lock pass. A lot of times I get stuck in half guard after a sweep. I'll cradle like that, just like Eddie did. He'll sweep and cradle to pass. You A lot of times you'll get uh, in Nogi, you know, because it has a big base in wrestling. You know, you'll, you'll get a lot of guys that like to cradle like that. And we were working that ginger snap today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, dude. Yep, see, 100%. We were just talking about this. Yeah. Dude. What's so funny is I was just thinking about, yeah, and two, I'll say like a few other things you showed me. Um, like, uh, the uh, that corkscrew grip ankle lock, I've thrown that to a few people and it's blown their fucking yeah. mind. Uh, and then too, uh, what was I just thinking? Something else that you show uh, that calf crusher from under uh, half with like half butterfly, like uh, oh, the, the half crab crusher from bottom yeah, where I swim out. Yeah, dude, that's because I do a bicep slicer that way. But I just never thought about doing it on the calf. It's, and it's nasty, dude. Yeah. I showed it to a couple. What's, what's ironic is you were showing it to me, but like two weeks before that, somebody had, Chris Thompson, one of our brown belts, he owns a school in uh, Fort Smith. He had tapped me with it. And I was like, that was cool, dude. I've never seen like a calf crusher from underneath like that with the shin in, like like pulling their hip. And then you showed it like two weeks later and I, and then I caught it like the week after that. And now it's part of my game. I've, yeah. sh- I've taught it to a couple of people. Yeah. I've caught it. I've caught that corkscrew ankle lock quite a few times in class. Well, it's cool that it came up at worlds. This, not this previous year, the year before Yeah, uh, with Leandro Lowe in a match. It was a big point of controversy. If you remember. Yeah, because not because Leandro Lowe defended by pointing it across and, and incorrectly defended it and made nope. the guy reap. But it's like, dude, you made the guy because reap. I think we taught that class, and then not long after that, that happened mm-hmm. because we were talking about it in class. Eddie's back on bottom, doesn't have the underhook. It would have been so awesome if Eddie would have got a twister in this match, right? <laughs> Has there been only one twister in an MMA fighter? Has there been two now? 